Welcome to Sold with Webinars, a podcast that aims to uncover how the most successful experts, coaches, consultants, and e-course professionals sell their products and services with just one sales presentation or webinar. A simple sales webinar can transform the business and life of a solopreneur. And this podcast will show you how other experts just like you are generating six and seven figures per year online with their webinars. So let's get started. What's going on, experts? It's Joel here with another special episode of Sold with Webinars. And guys and gals, it's been a while since I've had an interview style podcast. Well, today you're in for an incredible treat. I am so pumped to be able to share this episode with you that I recorded with the very talented Simone Vincenzi. And today we are going to be bridging the gap of seminars and webinars, right? If you have been paying attention or if you have joined the webinar vault, you know that I recently went to a sales seminar to see what they were doing and how I can apply our techniques to improve my clients' webinars, our webinars using sales seminars. Well, I have an excellent, excellent guest today. Simone has been running in-person sales seminars and combining them with follow-up webinars that have been absolutely crushing it. Two, three, four, five Xing the results. He's sharing his numbers on this episode, and we talk about all things that he's doing to promote local seminars and then following up with live webinars that are absolutely blowing the socks off of any conversion webinar that I've seen. This is an incredible system, incredible conversation, and Simone was just an absolute gem to talk to. You're going to love this episode, and be sure, after you listen to this episode, hit me up with a comment, right? Email me over at joel at thewebinaragency.com and let me know what you think about these episodes. I want to figure out what types of content you want to hear more of. Do you like these interview style? Do you like my solo style? Would you like a mix? Did you enjoy Simone's interview? Hit me up and let me know. Without further ado, let's jump into today's episode. Are you ready? Let's go. Hey, experts, what's going on? It's Joel here with another very special episode of Sold with Webinars. And guys and gals, you are in for an absolute treat today. I have a very, very special guest with me today. We are going to be talking about something extremely unique that we're going to blow your mind with webinars. Of course, that is what we are focused on. But my guest today, Simone Vincenzi, uses a live webinar strategy to drive into a live event. And I'm very excited to dive in. He's been using webinars for a very, very long time. He's done 85 webinars, at least 85 live webinars over the past two years. And I'm so pumped to have him jump on, talk marketing, talk webinars, talk strategies, so you guys can understand truly the power of what we're about to share with you today. So without further ado, Simone, welcome to the show, man. Thank you, Joel. It is great to be here. We had the conversations before. I love your show. I'm an avid listener, so it's great to be on the seat side this time. <laughs> well, dude, I've been looking forward to this for a while. It's always great to chat with fellow presenters, fellow stage presenters, webinar presenters, because we just have a unique way of thinking. And when you reached out to me and you shared with me some of the stats that you were getting, I'm going to share them real quick. I think it's a great way to open up our episode today. You reached out And you said you were getting a 50% opt-in rate, a 60% show-up rate, and a 30% conversion rate with your live webinars. And we'll jump into that. I'd love to kind of dive into strategies around that in just a minute. But you also said that you listened to one of my previous episodes with John Nemo, and you were leveraging his LinkedIn strategy to start to generate registrations. So I want to present the question to start out our interview. Where do you really think is going to make the biggest impact for somebody who's starting out with webinars? Should we start with dissecting how you're leveraging LinkedIn or should we kind of start with the funnel and the conversion rates? Like, I would start with the, the funnel. Okay. The reason why it is because a strategy, like a specific platform has context within the funnel. I think that when people, there is all these terms about funnel hacking this and funnel hacking that and funnel hacking the other one. And I think it's a bunch of Bull bots. Uh, <laughs> the reason why is a bunch of bull bots. It is because you just see a piece of the puzzle. Mm-hmm. 
you don't see everything. So what I'm doing on LinkedIn, it makes sense because I'm doing a lot of other things in different platforms. And that's why I would love to start from the strategic part. Yeah. So then we can go and how do I interact with the platform individually? Mm-hmm. So then everything makes sense. Okay, cool. So where I want to start with that is I want to start with the end in mind, right? So the end for you is your main goal is to get people to come to live events. So live event is your product that you sell on the webinar. So I want to start there, right? Because yeah. I think there's going to be some awesome conversation. Even, even further. You because, want to go further? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Even further, because my end goal is not to sell the live event. My end goal is uh, for people to buy what I sell mm-hmm. at the three-day live event that I have. And uh, you said something right. You always start with the end in mind. Mm-hmm. You're always starting, what is the highest product I want to sell? Because... Uh, a person who buys a $7 product and a person who buys a $10,000 product, it's a very different person. Mm-hmm. And I want to target the person who buys the $10,000 mm-hmm. and then reverse engineer the process to get them in. So we sell, we do a three-day seminar called Explode Your Expert Business. That seminar, we sell our lifetime membership, which is now $10,000. It's going up to $15,000 soon. And we charge in pound. I'm based in the UK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so I'm going to use pounds, dollars, but we are talking about very similar numbers if you take the conversion side. And I want to get people then uh, to my three-day event. And uh, I am obsessed with conversion. That's why when you mention those numbers, I can have those numbers because my genius is not traffic. Mm-hmm. No, everyone has their own genius. My genius is not traffic. My genius is finding as many possible ways to convert what I have. Mm-hmm. So we generally do our three-day event and we make uh, consistently a hundred thousand pounds every 15 people that we have in the room. Okay. So I know these are my numbers, 15 people in the room, I'm making a hundred K. That's good. So now what I want to have is uh, much more of these people as possible to the three day live event. So then what do I do to get people in? Well, there are a few things that I do. One is uh, to do a live seminars preview, which are free. And you did a brilliant episode about using live seminars as previews. I think it was about the financial like investment company. Yeah, with it the was property. Van Merrill's real estate investing company. Yep. Right, exactly. So you did a brilliant episode on that. And that's very similar to my business model. I do a free one-day event. And then at the free one-day event, then I will pitch the three days. And this is what I've done for a long time, but then I wasn't using webinars. And then I said, well, what if I introduce webinars to the equation? And now introduce two webinars at two points of the funnel. One is uh, to a normal audience, to another warm audience, which I would retarget. Uh, so they wouldn't sign up for the event. I would say, hey, come to the webinar. But also I will add another webinar to the people that have registered for the event and haven't showed up. And the people that have registered for the event, they showed up and didn't buy. Okay, so I'm not sure I'm following this real quick. Right, okay, yeah, let's go. So- let's. <laughs> So obviously your end goal is you've got a backend offer at the live event, uh-huh. right? Three-day live event, you got your 10K or 15K offer, right? Now you want to fill as, that event as much as possible. So the ways that you do it, you have a free preview event, which is live in person, correct? Yeah, exactly. Live, yep, live and in person. So how are you filling that live in person event? So I would do guest speaking gigs. So I, would, I will speak on other people's event. Mm-hmm. But also, I would use Facebook advertisement. It's the same thing. Is that almost the same thing? Or how would you fill a webinar? Right about context. If you want to fill a webinar in an organic way, what you would do? You are a guest podcast on other podcasts. uh, You would be a guest on other people's webinars. Context is everything. Mm -hmm. So if I want to fill up an event, one of the strategies that you do is uh, speaking in other people's events. Mm -hmm. But then I felt that I was missing a trick because it was very time intensive. No, you need to travel. You need to speak. Mm -hmm. I'm doing about 200 events a year. So I'm very active on the speaking arena. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to have something else. And that's where I decided to introduce a webinar. And I introduced two webinars. One, a webinar instead of alongside the live event. So a live preview event? The live preview, exactly. Yep. So to get free webinar for one hour to then sell the three-day event. Okay. So the targeting is very local. I live in London. I'm targeting London. Mm Mm-hmm. And then the other webinar, and this is the one that literally tripled our business. Like that webinar is the one that tripled our business, is to do a webinar for the people that registered for the event, the free preview, but 
didn't attend because a free preview is a free preview, like on a, mm-hmm. on a webinar. You will have a bunch of people that will register and then attend, and then you will have another bunch of people that will not attend. Mm-hmm. So what I'm doing, I'm retargeting the people that have registered but not attended, and also the people that have registered, attended, but didn't buy, mm-hmm. and I will invite them on the webinar to again, offer the three-day event option. And so just be clear, is the price the same? If I go to the preview event, or if I go to your live webinar, is the it's price different. the same? It's different. No, actually the price will be the same, but the offer will be different. Okay. So we offer the same price, but it's a different offer. Okay. Because there is an element of context there. And also we want people, the most important thing is that if you, I hate people that lie. Right, right. <laughs> you can just get it here if you get it right now. And then you know that you buy it one week later in the same thing. No. The offer that I make up, I always stick to that. Yep. My reputation is more important than the short-term cash. But then uh, the price point, uh, we part with the same, but the offer will be different. Okay. So how much is your three-day event? Is it like a $200 price point? Uh, 397 pound. And then the, the standard ticket and then the VIP is 1,500. Got it. Cool. Yeah. So the ticket that they were selling at the Fortune Builders event, it was 197 for the ticket to the three-day intensive. Yeah event. And then I think the back end at the event was like 30 K. It was like $30,000, 20 or 30,000. Now that's, I'm just guessing because I didn't end up going to that three day, but I think that's what the back end was. I know that from somebody who's run the sales. So yeah. In the property field it's common to have a 20, 30 grand offer as a back end. Yep. Cool. Awesome. Okay. So you have your free preview events, which you run Facebook ads to right? Yeah. And organic and, traffic and uh, email list. So we have organic and online and offline way, organic and paid advertisement. Yep. So how big is the London market? Like, I mean, so this is fascinating. You're crushing it with this. We've run, what's really fascinating about this is we ran a local, so back in the day, and I don't think I've talked about this publicly on the podcast. So this is the first time I'm revealing this. We had a client who signed up with us. They were very, very high level client. They paid us 40 grand to build a local webinar for them meaning local seminars, they were, they were in the day trading niche and they were selling and it was, they would spend like 80 grand a month on radio ads local and get people to come to a free seminar, free preview event. Mm-hmm. And then they would sell, I think it's like a $200 three-day weekend event. The same the model. Day, the reason why, and that for, for the audience, uh, is that the three-day is the highest converting model that you can right. have in the seminar industry. That's why you will see everyone doing three days because yep. I've tested one day, two days, three days, four days, five days. The three day is the one that converts the most. Yep, exactly. And so they would have the one day preview, the three day weekend, and that would upsell a 30 or 40 or 50K back end. And so they came to us and they were like, hey, we want to make this more efficient because like we're really tired of doing these multi-step events. And we just feel like there has to be a way to implement digital marketing and digital webinars to streamline this. And so we had a great webinar, but the issue that we ran into was not with the webinar. It was costing us like $150 just for a webinar registration. Registration, like a hundred. And we tried this for eight months and I don't know, clearly we had a traffic issue. So the reason why I ask you, like, how big is your London market? Is because that's a very, that's a very good point. Um, Yeah. Your great question because local webinars, anything which is local is more expensive. Yeah anything which is local because it's super targeted, right? And so we are going, because I had the same issue. So for, in particular, because it's a smaller market in the US, it's a big city, but there are a lot of players. Mm -hmm. I've got other players and uh, a lot of them, they spend way more than I do on Facebook ads. I literally, my Facebook ad spend is ridiculous compared to them. And Facebook would prioritize their ads and mine will cost more for, for all these issues. So I decided to go the other way around. Immediately, I would get them with an opt-in. So I will never target a webinar from Mm -hmm. a cold audience. So getting them familiar with my content first. And I will have quite a few ads just targeting content, 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 video views, relationship, video views, relationship, small ask, PDF. And then from there, we're targeting with the seminar and the webinar. So I would not run a webinar ad. Yeah, cold traffic to webinar, right? That's what you're saying. Yeah, I will not run that. Yep. Never run a, a cold traffic because I did it. I mean, if you... <laughs> yeah, it's frustrating. Yeah. <laughs> it is. I mean, I know that is worth, like that client even is worth if I pay even 50 pound the registration. 
because of my number, we are really great at conversion, so we make the money back. But it was draining up our finances up front mm-hmm. because we will make that money back within three to six months, the full amount that we wanted. Sometimes we will, to get to fill the three-day event, we start the marketing three months before, three, four months before. Mm-hmm. So the delay of the cash was creating a cash flow issue in our business. Yeah. I want to pause real quick because mm-hmm. in the world of digital marketing, there's a big misconception when people say like, oh, you need to know your lifetime value and your cost per acquisition, which you absolutely do. Like you absolutely do. But like people think that like, if you know your numbers and you're still like, you could just pay whatever you want, as long as you know your numbers, like that's not necessarily true because you have to understand that when you run paid ads, you have to abide by the laws of scalability. So like, okay, fine. Simone, you know that you can pay 50 bucks per webinar registration on the front end and you can still be profitable, but that is not scalable at all. Like, Because when you start dumping more money in ads, that $50 CP cost per registration is going to go way up because that's just how the world works. That was the exact same issue that we ran into with this local seminar company. And like, yeah. we didn't budget for a PDF downloader free content. Like, we were testing this webinar registration model and it just, like, we ran into a lot of issues just because of the traffic. And so, anyway, I wanted to jump in because that's a very, very important point for anybody who understands traffic at all. And so, anyway, minor exactly. comment there. that's why uh, even the event, you can go to Easy in London to pay in my niche, which is, you know, experts, cons- coaches, consultants, trainers, is really to get like 150, 200 pound per registration uh, for a free event. So I've stopped even putting out ads in that way. I would just build the list, build the relationship, retarget the heck out of my list. Even, you know, like five pound a day ads, but they are, as long as they see me, I'm still there. And then if I have a webinar, for example, I will write an email to invite my list to the webinar and then I will put that email as a Facebook post and then sponsor it to go in front of the people that are part of my mailing list to then make the most out of the people that have already have a relationship with me. And I think this is the thing in a digital marketing world, Joel. I don't know if you can agree with me, but people are completely obsessed about new leads, new leads, new leads, new leads, new leads. But what about, what if you nurture in the best possible way the current list that you have mm-hmm. and my list is relatively small i make good money mm-hmm. but we have people calling the list we have run local ads to our list we get them all in a facebook group we tag them we send them personal messages we send them personal emails checking out how they are with text messages that's why i said that there is much more to the strategy because now we use now Facebook as text, email, messenger bots become huge right now. All this just to get people to attend. And that's why we're talking about these numbers at the beginning because we are nurturing that relationship so much. When we have a webinar coming up or an event coming up, our registrations rates are huge and our costs are minimum. Because they're already warm. They know you, they know, but like that's why you're So you said when you run your webinars, you have a 50% opt-in, 60% show up rate, and a 30% conversion. That's because you're putting in a lot of effort on the front end of it's not just mass market advertising. Yes, you're advertising, but you're spending a lot of time nurturing, which is why your numbers are so fantastic, right? Yeah. So yeah, which I love it. Like so many people don't focus on it. I mean, that's why we do podcasting, right? Podcasting is all about nurturing, right? I have two podcasts. And it's all about nurturing. It's all about warming up that we're list. Very, we're very similar. I've got two as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I want everyone to not misunderstand me. I'm a very much a direct response marketer, meaning like, yeah, I'm focused on conversion too. And I want that result. But you have to understand that there's a balance with nurturing and conversion. And when you do both, your results are going to be exponential. So I love it, man. So you mentioned that your goal, and I want to make sure I understood this right, is your goal for cost per um, registration of your one day preview or your one day event. Is that 150 to 200 bucks? I thought I heard you mention that. Or no, maybe. no, that was the cost that, that it was costing me to get uh, one. Yeah. yeah the cost to get to get one. That's why we are not focusing mainly on paid ad for, for the, for the events. So we want, mm-hmm. we're focusing on paid ads to build the list or you can get an email for one, two, three, five, depending sometimes 10, because mm-hmm. even like 
we are running a local ad. So even for a PDF, I will spend uh, sometimes like 10 pound registration for someone downloading a PDF. Yeah. Uh, but I know that from the PDF, immediately they got into the bot yeah. and then we send them a text message and they receive a phone call because mm-hmm. we take also their phone number. Yep. Everything I do, I take their phone numbers. So it costs me more, but I, from the PDF, they've already seen me around mm-hmm. quite a bit. So we give them an incentive. Hey, get this on the bot. You get this on the text as a text message. And now I've got so many ways to get in touch with that person. So then I have my chances for them to register in attending an event or a webinar are really high. Yeah. So that's awesome. Okay. So you're spending most of your paid ads are on the front end of building the list and nurturing, and you're spending a lot of effort doing that, right? How often now you said you did 85 webinars in two years. How often are you doing your, I want to start with the end in mind. How often are you doing your three day events? And I want to work backwards to figure out how often you're doing your live webinars. Uh, Five times a year is a live event. It's a three days. So we will have uh, one in January, one in uh, April, one in June, one in September, one in November. Yep. This is our our schedule. Yep. And uh, in fact, the next one is coming the last weekend of September. And from there, then I'm doing one live event every month, the preview. The preview, okay. And then I will do two or three live webinars depending from the month. And they are all live. Yeah. Like you are the master of automated webinars. I tested automated webinars one. I was like, what the freak is this thing? It's a completely different ball game, completely different funnel, much more complex. And I didn't want to stress myself out to build that <laughs> so much. So then I went on the live webinar. But this is also the thing. I know that my audience, they will respond well when I'm going live. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'd rather spend that hour rather than having leaving a lot of people like falling down the funnel. Mm-hmm. And that's the whole part of being in touch with them. Yep. And that's why we d- decided to opt in. Instead of investing heavily in the automation, we decided to say, let's give this level of presence because it's also in alignment with our brand and becomes a mm-hmm. brand thing. Yeah. Our brand is from the beginning. You buy from us. So we are present. Me, my team, everyone, we are present in your business. So we mm-hmm. want to set the relationship with a level of presence because that's part of our ethos as a company and one of our main selling points. Yep. Yeah, 100%. I mean, everything has to be brand aligned, right? Everything has to be brand aligned. So you never listen to someone who's like, go straight automated or only do live or do live once a week. It's like, you have to figure out what are you selling? What are you delivering? And for you specifically, like you know what works and your brand is being present. So why risk that? Especially when your goal is to nurture that list as much as possible doing fake live or not even fake live, but just you know, doing automated, you run that risk of, of losing that trust with your, with your customers. I think it's probably even more important when you're local only because sure. like, that's your hometown. Like, that's your baby. That's exactly. your market. And I, I'm not saying that I think there is a space and a time for automated mm-hmm. because I know that by not having the automated, I'm missing some tricks because it's the less scalable. So in everything, there is pros and cons. Yep. And is this something I'm going to be looking at? Absolutely. But it's all put in context and not just doing it for the sake of it, because that's the moment where you just end up wasting time or wasting money. And also, this is a, something really important. If I want people to stay until the end, and this is when we are talking about these numbers and these metrics that we have. So we have a high number of registration rate because we spend a lot of time on building the relationship. And the people will hear that there is a webinar email, bots, text messages, phone calls, you name it. Uh, if you want me to send a pigeon, I'll send you a pigeon as well. <laughs> I just don't know to do that. But <laughs> I send you a fox. I don't know. But <laughs> I want to do that. And, but then uh, the other part is that makes people to stay until the end of the webinar. Because I'm sure, Joel, by reviewing your webinars, when I know you're running your membership site, when you're doing the webinar reviews, which I think is brilliant, everyone should join and sign up for that offer. You have listened to a lot of boring webinars when you're saying, oh my God, do I really need to review all this? It's like a cup of coffee. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you just got I'm, be- I'm already three deep today. So. <laughs> it's it's going to be a long night. And the fact is that presenters don't invest in the things that makes them unique, which is presenting skills. Mm-hmm. And 
they don't understand that the better presenter you are and the more engaging you are in a presenter, the more funny you are. Like you are entertaining. You're not just teaching. Yep. I uh, think they call it ed- edutaining, right? Yep. Thank you. Exactly. Yep. You're edutaining. The moment you're just teaching, you've lost. People are going to leave. Why? Because they can find the same exact information for someone else. From just Jimmy down the road, exact same things. And probably even better than you. <laughs> so <laughs> if you at least are not entertaining and you don't have a good personality, you cannot show up and you don't have to be like a crazy extrovert like me. Even there are people that are really into it, but they become really good presenters. You've got to find a way to keep them engaged. Mm-hmm. I recently took a stand-up comedy course and I did my first stand-up comedy live last week. Nerve wracking. Worst experience of my life. I mean, people laughed at the end. I was glad they were all drunk in the audience. So that helped. Why did I do that? Why yeah. did I put myself through that training? Because it's a huge part of the entertainment. The more people laugh, the more they will stay, the more they will enjoy their time. Think about what can you do to make yourself entertaining, not just the content being great content, mm-hmm. but you being interesting as a person. And that's how you get the majority of the people to listen to you until the end. Because they say, wow, this is different. I'm actually having a good time. Mm-hmm. It's not boring as hell. I had one client that actually bought one of our three-day courses and they said, the reason why I bought it is because you made me love webinars again. I yep. almost gave up. That's the testament of the market. It is. It is. Yeah. People buy you more than they buy anything else. And if you're the expert and you're the one who's presenting and they're buying a form of you, whether it's your program, whether it's your consulting, whatever, like if they're buying what's in your head, you need to show up in many different ways to appeal to the biggest market and like you show your brand, show your personality. That's what they're going to buy. And that's what they're going to buy and stick around for. So I love it, man. It's a, it's a message that needs to get out there to anyone who's presenting, any of these presenters, webinar presenters, you name it. Very, very valuable lesson. Yeah. I want to ask you a question because I don't think I've talked to anybody who has run both of these types of events. So you do in-person live and you also do live webinars. Mm-hmm. What do you think is... What do you do different? Like, are they the same message on the live webinar and the preview event or are they completely different messages? The message is the same. Yeah. yeah. The delivery is different because at the end of the day, to get someone to buy, to when you go through the persuasion process of buying, mm-hmm. the persuasion is the same whether you're doing live or online. It's the context which is very different. Mm-hmm. And I always like to do different things compared to what a lot of other people do. That's one of the ways to stand out. Look at what other people are doing and do the bloody opposite. And then you find if it works or not. Sometimes you do the opposite is like, now I understand why everyone else is doing that way. Because <laughs> <laughs> actually this way doesn't work. So... But at least you've tried, right? So when I'm doing a live webinar, I'm always uh, looking to make it as interactive as possible. So they will have a worksheet, or if not a worksheet, they will have some downloadable resources. And I know that a lot of people now are doing that, but I'm going not just to give a presentation, but I'm going to give them exercises to do. So I would say, this is not a normal webinar. Today, you're going to get things done. If you're not ready to get things done, then please leave the room because I don't want you. Mm-hmm. I'm immediately finding the person who says, I'm going to take this webinar seriously. Now, not everyone would do, but the majority will. Or they will have an understanding that I'm the person who gets them to implement things straight away because that's mm-hmm. part of my brand. You come to our courses, you implement it straight away. It's not learning, it's implementation. You know already too much. Mm-hmm. So I would give them exercises and then I will get them to get implement straight away. Now, online is different because you cannot leave on a webinar long gaps while they are doing the exercise. They say, okay, let me shut up for five minutes while you're doing the exercise. You come back after the five minutes, everyone is left. So <laughs> you don't want that to happen. So then I will then deliver, once they're doing the exercise, they're very short. The exercise that can be completed within 30 to 60 seconds. And while they're completing the exercises, I will give them case studies on how other people completed this exercise before. So then uh, I will keep them engaged Mm -hmm. while they're doing the exercise as well. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing that I found that helps with the stickability. And when I asked why, what did you like about the webinar? They said that thing. The other part is uh, when I'm doing a live seminar is the same. I'm getting them to implement things. So I will create workshop style seminar. Mm-hmm. is not teaching, is not having my PowerPoint presentation and making the sale in that way, but is more 
about getting them to create a community inside mm-hmm. the room, getting them to share what they learn, share experiences. And I consider myself more a facilitator than a speaker. Mm-hmm. And that's in alignment with my brand, with what I believe in. And people love it more. Therefore, they will have a great experience in the one-day seminar. And then it's almost like seeing what they can expect yep. on the three days. Yep. I will say this. When I went to the Fortune Builders event, from the get-go, I mean, number one, it was super control. It was the most controlled process I've ever been through. From, I mean, there was a greeter outside of the room that collected my registration and then stuck a name tag on me and then was asking me why I was here. Have I ever invested in real estate before? I mean, like from the as soon as I touched that person to walking in the room and greeted by another greeter, and then they ushered me into my seat, making sure that I sat at the front. Then they started to immediately build a community. Everyone started interacting with each other. I mean. It's a whole different ballgame of, of nice. doing live in-person preview seminars versus live webinars. It's a really I know, different ballgame. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I got it completely. I mean, we do a lot of events. I said 200 a year. I did events with Les Brown, with 1,000 people, with Gary Vaynerchuk, 500 people, with Simon Sinek, John C. Maxwell. I've been doing events pretty much with a lot of big names. And it's a machine. You need yeah. to run everything like clockwork. On the webinar, you have the automation. It helps you do that and to create that experience of the email sequences that you make and the sequences that you run, the follow-up. If you have retargeting ads that are going after that, you have that automated. Well, when you are in a live seminar, you have live people mm-hmm. and everyone needs to know what they're doing. It's not easy. Mm-hmm. It's not easy. But at the same time, it's incredibly profitable. Yeah. So um, no one says that the best thing, if, if all the best thing would be easier to get, mm-hmm. you know, getting the woman or the man that you love in your life, most of the time I hear the stories, they're not easy. There's always some stuff that they need, people need to go through. And if it would be easy, I think it would lose value. Yeah. And, and everyone else would do it. So. so let's get back to your webinar, your live webinars. You do two or three per month, 50% opt-in, 60% show up rate, 30% conversion. As you've been optimizing this, you've been testing those live webinars like What moved the needle the biggest of all the things that you tested? Because I'm sure you've probably tested dozens, if not hundreds of different things to help improve your webinar. Oh yeah. What would you say are like the one or two things that move the needle the most in terms of getting people to show up and well, just buy, getting more people to buy? Okay. Let's say one I've already talked about, uh, which was value upfront and relationship upfront. And that's what gets the people to show up and buy. So we already talked about that. I'm not going to repeat myself. Yep. The second one that moved the needle the most is the selling style and the product that you sell. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know that Joel, you put a lot of work and a lot of effort in making sure that when you create a product for your clients, is a product that actually sells. Mm -hmm. A lot of webinars don't sell because the product is crap. You sell something which is not good, people are not going to buy. It's so difficult, right? (laughs) To get it. So you want to know your audience and test your product and do some market research of what they would buy offline. I would never go and test a product from a webinar on a one-to-many. Every product that I sell is something that I've sold on a one-to-one before, which means I know the objections that they're going to give me. I know what is important for them, what makes them buy, what makes them not buy, what are concern or reservations they have, what questions they have, because my webinar presentation needs to answer all these questions. Mm-hmm. So if I don't know them and I'm just guessing, I say, oh, maybe they will buy this thing. And, you know, a lot of people would just use webinars because it's a good way to hide and not sell one-to-one. <laughs> the thing is, that, is this thing, but if you're rubbish at selling one-to-one, you'll be rubbish at selling from webinar. Sales is sales. Mm-hmm. And I can say that because I was rubbish at selling one-to-one. I guess what? I sucked on webinars too. <laughs> I tell you, it took me about 17 webinars before I made my first sale. Wow. Right? Yep. 17. Of course, I wasn't working with you. If I was working with you, probably it would have taken me much less. But starting by myself. Uh, 17 bloody webinars before someone paid me 197 freaking pounds. And, but I'm the kind of person who never gives up. Yep. And so, so the, uh, selling, knowing the offer and knowing what to pitch, yeah. how to pitch it, that made the difference. And also the more I was doing, the more I was finding my presentation style and being entertaining and the entertainment sells. Oh yeah. That sells. Entertainment sells. I love it, man. Yeah. So I will reiterate your point and your discovery of what you found. The offer is everything. It's not just one thing. It is everything. I mean, 
You can have the greatest content in the world. You can provide the most value in the world. But if they don't want to buy a freaking hammer and they're looking for a nail, like they're not going to buy your hammer if they're looking for something else. Like it doesn't matter. You have to have something that they actually want. And it is everything, in my opinion. Like until you have the offer that they actually want, you're going to keep beating your head at the wall. It takes time. Like I wish I could tell you that everyone who comes to me, Like, yep, I'll create you the perfect offer. I can get you 98% of the way there. And and based on all the experience, like I know what offers do really, really well. But if I'm working in a brand new market, I'll take my best guess. And most of the time we can get some conversions. But personal development is one market that I've decided to steer clear from because that's a difficult... Like many of my clients are in the business niche, you know, business opportunity, business niche, marketing and sales. And I've worked in a lot of different niches, relationship development, but personal development has always given me, like that niche specifically has always given me trouble. Why do you think is that? A couple of clients that I've worked with are selling like intangibles. And I always try to make the intangible tangible. And it's hard. I mean, like sometimes (laughs) it's like selling fluff and I'm like, I just don't feel comfortable with it. It's really difficult. And I don't know. It's very, very difficult. That's the most difficult thing. It is the same from the seminars because I started and we managed to make it work in the seminar part, in the seminar way, and also in the webinars later. But there was a, the most difficult thing was making, as you said, the intangible tangible. Yeah. Because, you know, business, you pay me money, you can earn more money. Yeah. There is nothing more straightforward than that. Yep. You are 15 pounds overweight, you pay me money, you're not overweight anymore. Yep. Fine. If you buy this crystal, you will be aligned with the highest spirit and the sky will open up. That's a bit more difficult to sell. You need it's a lot not- of branding. Like, you, <laughs> like at that point, like, yeah. so I did have, I had two clients that crushed it, but they crushed it because their audience already knew, liked, and trust them. And so like when they just created, like they'll buy anything from them and, they, and we created a webinar with them and they crushed it. But man, Simone, when I watched that webinar, I'm like, this is going to freaking bomb. Like, I don't know why anybody would buy this. And then, so this is the difference. They were such rabid buyers and they knew my customers so well. It was the highest sales conversion rate for a thousand dollar offer I have ever seen. It was like a 10% conversion rate of the funnel, the entire funnel on a thousand dollar offer. And I'm like, oh my God, (laughs) I'm so glad that you crushed it. But like at this point, like we should probably part ways because I don't think I can help you anymore. <laughs> and this is the thing. You can understand that niche because you are in that niche too. Yeah. Well, in the personal development, I could understand it as well because I was in that niche too. Like I was a consumer before becoming a seller. Yeah. So I was looking at what made me buy, what were the things that made me buy. And it's very difficult to sell something that you don't understand or you don't believe in, or mm-hmm. it just takes so much effort. Yep. I completely get it because I create uh, the way you create webinars for people. I create seminars for people. Mm -hmm. We create a high converting seminars for our clients. And sometimes we help them with webinars, but mainly with with seminars. If there is an industry, I only work with them uh, when there is an industry that I know and I know what they want and know what they need because otherwise, like you're paying me all this money, plus I'm taking a percentage of your sales and I want to make sure that your sales happen. I want to be 100% sure yeah. That we are going to crush it when we are doing it. Yeah. If you're getting me to sell gardening tools at a seminar, I might not be able to do that. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm not a gardener, not my passion. Well, Simone, man, we've talked about a ton of stuff here. Like your model is fascinating, which is perfect timing because I just went through one of these models to kind of learn and discover how they did it and learning the art of in person seminars and combining it with the art of live webinars. I mean, you have developed something that. I know you're crushing it in your business and you're doing very well. You know all your numbers. That's the number one sign of a great business owner is you know your numbers, you know your conversions. Biggest takeaway with making that work is not advertising the webinar directly. It's building that nurture list because you can't affordably go cold traffic to a webinar with local marketing. And that was the mistake that we made when we tried to do it with a day trading niche. And it was a very expensive mistake. But it was a learning experience. And I'm glad that you know, I was able to share it with you and you were able to confirm it. Because at some point, I thought that I was just a terrible marketer. I thought it was actually going to be cheaper. I thought webinar registrations were going to be cheaper. It was vastly opposite. <laughs> and now but, you have a story to tell. I know. Yeah. 
So, I mean, your whole goal is to get people to buy your three and buy your back end offer that comes from your three day event. And that's sold through a live webinar or a one day preview. And you're retargeting your non attendees with your live webinar. You're selling that $397 three day event. Unbelievable, man. It's a fascinating model. But you mentioned one thing that I just want to highlight branding is very important, right? Before you decide to go automated, does it align with your brand? Is your audience going to love it? Are they going to accept it? And that's an answer that I can't provide anyone. That's an answer that you can't provide your audience. But the expert has to decide for themselves, can they go automated? And how are they going to want to present themselves as a brand? And so this is why you're able to get 50% opt-in, 60% show up and 30% conversion because you're putting a lot of that nurturing up front and that legwork up front. And exactly. you figured out. And as you said, uh, you said something great because it's about finding a sales style that suits you. Mm-hmm. There are so many selling strategies when you're selling one too many. Yep. And I was having a chat with a client. I love giving scarcity in uh, time and numbers. Mm-hmm. Limited amount of units, limited amount of time. She hates that. She likes giving just scarcity of time. She tested the other one. She felt, no, this is not me. Mm-hmm. And we said, okay, that's fine. Like, you don't need to be me. And that's a message for everyone who is listening right now that maybe is watching your webinars, is watching my webinars and say, I need to be like Joel. I need to be like Simone. I need to be like this person. No, you just need to find your style. Mm -hmm. In order to find your style though, you need to test different things because otherwise you will never know what your style is. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So follow your style. And then you'll find that you crack it something and the audience will just fall in love with you and listen to you all the time. I love it, man. Excellent, excellent stuff. Simone, where can people connect with you? Because I know you're definitely somebody that I follow. You're somebody that everyone in my audience should follow. Drop some links. Where can we I agree with you. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you very much. So there are a few things, a few places where you can connect with me. There is going to be definitely a link in the show notes. And in the link in the show notes, you will be able to follow my podcast, join my Facebook group, and is a custom page that we made for this interview in particular. And also, if you want to explore how we can work together, you can as well apply for a call and then our team will get in touch with you. If you're listening to podcasts, follow our podcast, which is Explode Your Expert Biz Show. Joel, are you booked for that? Not yet. I'm, Not I, yet. I, got okay, the link. So, I still have right, to book it. Yeah. Right, okay. So Joel will be one of our future guests. So make sure that you follow our podcast, which is Explode Your Expert Biz Show. But then you can check all the content on our website is www.gtex.org.uk or find our Facebook group, which is Explode Your Expert Biz. Guess what? <laughs> you can join us there. Simone, thank you, man. This has been a lot of fun. Like, and it's just timely because I just went through one of those live events. And now I'm talking to somebody who not only does those live events, but they also pair it up with webinars. And that's one thing that Fortune Builders doesn't do is they only stick to the live event model. They travel around the country. And I talked to one of the sales reps and they said they tried webinars, but they're just sticking to their selling style, which is the roadshow. It's the live event roadshow. I'm like, okay, that's cool. They should hire you. Yeah, well, they <laughs> should definitely hire you. They're leaving so much money on the table. They are time. leaving a lot of money on the table, but oh my you know God. What? maybe I'll pitch them. Maybe I'll reach out to them because I have all their contact information. I am a buyer. <laughs> Simone, I had a blast, man. Is there anything that we left out that you wanted to make sure that you included before we wrap up? No, all, I, all that we covered... Just to reiterate, work uh, to become the best possible presenter you can be Mm -hmm. and the best possible salesperson you can be because that's how you're going to make money. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's just going to be a good experience or a nerve-wracking experience, whatever you want to call it. But keep working on your craft. Don't expect immediate results because if you expect immediate results, you're setting up for failure. took me 17 webinars before I sold my first product. It took me... Was that 15 seminars before I've made any money from seminars? So, and Joe, probably you have the same, very similar story yep. and everyone has it. So don't expect immediate results. Take your time, test, 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 become the best you can be. And then you will be sitting on a pile of cash being, <laughs> making the impact in the world you want to make and be incredibly happy and satisfied about the work that you're doing. Awesome. Simone, I appreciate you, man. Go connect with Simone on all of the links that he just dropped. Let him know that you heard him on Sold with Webinars. And Simone, thank you for sharing your knowledge, man. Thank you for dropping all that intel. I know my audience is going to appreciate it. And for everybody else, thank you for tuning in. Go connect with Simone. Let him know you heard him on our our podcast. And we'll see you on the next episode. Take care. 
Thanks so much for listening. We hope you enjoyed today's episode and we look forward to giving you the next one. If you're serious about launching your own sales webinar, here are a few resources to check out. For free access to the software that we built internally for the webinar agency to train our copywriters, head to soldwithwebinars.com to sign up for a free trial to the webinar vault and get access to regular webinar breakdowns that are generating hundreds of thousands of dollars per month. If you'd like to work with me one-on-one on your webinar project, head to thewebinaragency.com for more details. And finally, be sure to subscribe to my other podcast, Experts Unleashed, where I interview change makers and entrepreneurs to discover how they create opportunity to turn their expertise into income. Be sure to join us next time, and I'll see you there.